Recently, NVIDIA launched its Jetson Orin Nano Super development kit. Uh, and that's an improvement on its previous kit, which was just called the Jetson Orin Nano development kit. Now, in this video, I want to examine the differences between the new Super kit and the one that came out last year. I want to show you running a couple of large language models on a single uh, Jetson Nano Orin development kit, so Llama 3.2 and Gemma 2 from Google. And then I want to show you how you can use two or more Jetson Orin Nano development kits, super or not super, uh, to actually run larger uh, models in a cluster. So we're going to run this model over several nodes. And I want to show you how that works and what it means for performance and what it also means for the ability to run larger models that are bigger than the amount of RAM you have on the board. OK, so maybe that sounds interesting. Please let me explain. OK, so let's take a dive into the uh, NVIDIA Jetson Orin Nano Developer Kit Super. This is what was announced by uh, NVIDIA just at the end of uh, 2024. This is what it looks like in the box. And the reason I've put this photo here, I'll show you some more photos of the device very soon, is notice it doesn't say super there. That doesn't isn't included on the box or anything. And the reason is, is because it's the same hardware as we had a year ago, the Jetson Orin Nano developer kit but there's now better software and I'm gonna unpack all of that now in this video. So I reviewed the Jetson Orin Nano a year ago and from a hardware point of view, nothing has changed. Everything I covered in that video is true of the new Jetson Orin uh, Nano Developer Kit Super. That's exactly the same piece of hardware. And what I covered in my previous review was Doom 3 running. Doom 3 is open source and of course this has got an NVIDIA GPU in it so I showed that you could run uh, a game like Doom. So when people ask can it run Doom? Yes in indeed it can. I gave an overview of the Jetson uh, family. I did an overview of the Jetson Orin Nano module. I did the relative performance of the different Jetson modules and I showed a demo of PeopleNet uh, AI model running and that recognizes people in a live video feed. You can do it in real time. So I've covered all of this a year ago in my previous video. If you want to see that, it's there. I'll leave a link in the description. That's really the starting point. Before you come to the super version of this development kit, you really should look at the existing review that I did, as I say, over a year ago. So if that was a year ago, what has been announced? Well, the first thing and very, very important is the price has come down. The original Jetson Orin Nano Developer Kit was $500 and that's now come down half price of $250. So that's a huge, huge saving. So if you were kind of on the fence about the Jetson Orin Nano Developer Kit, now is the time to get it because that is an amazing price. And secondly, there has been a performance increase and we'll talk more about how that's been managed in a moment. But we went from 40 tops to 67 tops in terms of AI performance. The bandwidth, memory bandwidth, went up from 68 gigabytes a second to 102 gigabytes a second. So a massive increase there. And so when you add those two together, you get a 1.7x uh, performance boost for generative AI models. And that's really important today. Maybe that wasn't so important when this was first launched a year ago. But NVIDIA have seen the emergence of large language models, generative AI, and they've said, well, we need to tweak this to make it even better. And a 1.7x gain is absolutely fantastic. Really, really significant performance improvement. Now, all Jetson Orin Nano developer kits can benefit from this new performance. OK, and the reason is it's all been done in software. So I had my Jetson or in Nano Developer Kit that I used when I made the video a year ago and I applied the new software to it and I also see these new performance figures. That's why it's not new hardware, it's new software. And if you've got the module already or you buy one now, you get the new software and you get this big performance boost. So very good from Nvidia in that sense that it's not, you don't have to buy something new, you can take last year's kit, you can add in the new firmware, add in the new software, and you're going to get all this greater performance. Now, kudos to NVIDIA, because the PR team managed to convince a lot of YouTubers 
that this was a new AI computer board. I won't name them, I won't, but I was quite uh, shocked when I saw all these videos talking about how great the new developer board is from NVIDIA when in fact it's exactly the same developer board from last year. However, it doesn't take away from the real gains that we get by using the new software as well, of course, that significant uh, price drop. So let's look at the specifications. So you've got that six core ARM Cortex A78 run 64-bit uh, running at 1.7 gigahertz and that's up from 1.5 gigahertz. So the first tweak the software did is NVIDIA worked out they could safely overclock the CPU and it's not going to cause any problems at all on all of the boards. And I've run it at the new speeds and it's absolutely fine. So slightly tweaked uh, CPU speed. Now there's the 1024 core ampere architecture GPU with 32 tensor cores that was running at 625 megahertz and they've almost doubled it to 1020 megahertz. So that's where you're getting a large of that 1.7x increase because they've upped the clock speed and again it's NVIDIA's board, it's NVIDIA's GPU. They said, hey, let's see what we can do. Oh, it turns out we can overclock these uh, and it works right. Or maybe they were very conservative in the beginning. I, I just don't know how that decision was made, but it can clearly run at this new gigahertz speed and that makes a big difference to the performance. And the bandwidth has gone up. It's 102 gigabytes a second, as I said, up from 68. So they've been able to clock the RAM faster. And again, it works. So by clocking, improving the clock speed of the CPU, GPU and the RAM, overclocked it in every department. But this is now the def This is now official. It's not an overclocking you're doing yourself. This is the official speed. You get that increase in performance. And of course, when you increase clock frequency, you increase the power consumption. So part of the new software updates, you now get a max N mode, uh, which gives is 25 watts. So there was 15 watts before, 7 watts, and now there's a 25 watt mode for these new higher clock frequencies. Okay, so the first thing I want to do is show you some Olama demos. So we're going to run uh, Llama 3.2, that's a 3 billion parameter quantized with uh, 4 bits uh, and that is about 2 gigabytes when it loads into RAM and then also going to show you Gemma 2, a 2 billion parameter one again 4 bits, that's about 1.6 gigabytes in RAM just to show you that running so you get an idea of the performance of running a significantly uh, powerful, significantly capable large language model locally on your Jetson uh, or in Nano developer kit. Okay, so here I am over on the command line of the Orin Nano. Let's just run a JTOP and we can see here that it's the six cores. And if we go over to the GPU information, we can see here it runs at a maximum of one gigahertz. And if we go over to the CPU, we can see that runs at 1.7 gigahertz. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna run uh, Olama and we're going to run uh, using Llama 3.2. What are five interesting things to do in New York? Let's go ahead and run that. And as you can see here, the uh, output is coming out uh, and it will list uh, five things as you'd expect. Let's see what the final token rate was. Okay, so there you go, token rate of 20.5 tokens per second. Let's ask the same question now of uh, Google's Gemma 2. This is a 2 billion parameter model. Of course, it will give you different output, different model, but it's still going to answer the question. Five things you can do. Catch a Broadway show there for number two. Let's look at the uh, token rate. Okay, there you go, 21 tokens per second. Now, the Jetson Orin Nano has eight gigabytes of RAM. We've just seen we've loaded in a two gigabyte, 1.6 gigabyte model, that's absolutely fine. And that, so it is sufficient for many small models and absolutely, absolutely brilliant. But there are lots of large language models that are bigger than eight gigabytes. In fact, my previous video was about uh, NVIDIA's new Digits project, which is a mini PC with an NVIDIA GPU and an ARM CPU. It's got 128 gigabytes of memory in because they know that you're gonna to need to be able to run very large models. Now, large models can be split over several Jetson Nano Orin devices, each carrying a part of the neural network. Now, we're going to be using Llama.cpp for this. Here's a basic uh, diagram, so you have a host where you run the command line, you say, you know, your prompt, show me five things to do in New York or whatever it is your prompt is gonna be. And then that farms out the information to some hosts that are connected over ethernet. 
And each one of these hosts holds a part of the neural network. And of course, it can use the tensor cores and the GPU. So when you do that, for example, I can run the Gemma 2 9 billion parameter uh, large language model, which is 9.2 gigabytes of memory needed to run that. And I haven't got 9.2 gigabytes, I've only got eight gigabytes. So I split it over two nodes and it can then run. Now to do this, you need to build Llama CPP from source enabling RPC and CUDA. Full instructions on the Llama.CPP website. I'll leave a link to the GitHub repository in the description below. You basically start the RPC server on one Orin Nano. You then start the second RPC server on the other Orin Nano. And then from a third machine, a Linux machine, a Raspberry Pi, or even Windows subsystem for Linux, I've tested both, both work fine. Run Llama CPP a command line tool. And in the parameters, you specify the names of the RPC servers that you've got set up. And I'll demo that for you now. Okay, so I've got uh, one uh, Orin Nano here on the left. I've got the Orin Nano Super, which is actually the kit that I got uh, with the when it was announced as Super, but they're both exactly uh, the same. In fact, we can run uh, JTOP on both of these and you'll see they're both uh, exactly the same uh, kits there running at the same frequencies and so on. So what we can do now is we can run an RPC server on each one. So there I'm running the uh, Llama RPC server, running the Llama RPC server. So two RPC servers and they're offering about five and a half gigs each uh, of memory to the network, to the to the cluster. Okay, so here is my actual laptop. This is a Windows subsystem for Linux. And what I'm saying here is I want to run this model that's Gemma 2 9 billion. So that's bigger than the memory we've got available. And I ask the same question, what are five interesting things to do in New York? And then notice this, minus minus RPC, and then I list the two addresses, dot .58 and .59 are the addresses of my two um, RPC servers there you see in the background and this parameter here says make sure you put as much on the GPU as many layers into the GPU as you can and when we run this you can see in the background here that it's actually making some connections to the RPC servers loads of things need to be loaded up and transferred over the network as it's doing that and you'll actually see now it's saying look here it's got four and a half gigs almost five on this one are available on each one that's how much memory it's used on each one uh, to do this and it's now doing the uh, loading that it needs to do okay so we can see the response start to come out here are five interesting things to do in new york and as you'd expect it will list five things again as it did before now you'll notice it's running a little slower because we've got network traffic going on here and that's only gigabit ethernet going on here so these three machines are now all talking to each other so you're not necessarily getting a speed improvement we will look at the tokens per second at the end but what we are getting is the fact that i'm now running a model that's bigger than the memory i've got on one node so i've actually managed to spread this over several nodes and they are talking to each other so that we can actually run bigger networks so if you had more of these if you had four or eight of them then you could easily run bigger and bigger networks and you can test them out to see what kind of capabilities they have even though it may not be as fast as you would want okay so we're coming to the end of the answer here let's see what the answer is so you can just see here it's four tokens a second so we were getting around 2021 20, when it's just running on one node this has dropped down to four so it's slower because we are dealing with a much bigger network here so it's divided over two machines there's an ethernet connections going on between them plus of course it's now trying to process nine gigs of memory just to get you out each token so you'd expect a smaller uh, number but look at what we can do now we can run bigger and bigger networks on just uh, home equipment stuff you can buy for 250 dollars you can stack these up as high as you want and run them one alongside the other Okay, so there you have it, $250 for a hexa-core CPU setup, but with a thousand-core GPU in an edge embedded device setup, kind of like a Raspberry Pi, it's got GPIO pins and so on. You can use one on its own or multiple of them together. You can swap in and out the modules because this is a module, this is a carrier board for it. Lots and lots of potential. Love to hear your thoughts in the comments below. My name's Gary Sims, this is Gary Explains. I really hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do give it a thumbs up. And if you like these kind of videos, then why not stick around by subscribing to the channel? Okay, that's it. I'll see you in the next one.